Hey everyone, I'm doing something a little different this time. Uh, I've drawn this piece over the last couple of weeks, and uh, I recorded about seven and a half hours of, of total footage that I've edited down to this about two hour segment. Um, I'm going to post this as one big video, and I think I'm going to post it over time in 30 minute segments or so. Um, it's just just for fun, just to see this this different format, how it works, and to try something new new and different, you know. I found some nice music, and I thought this would be a fun way for people just to put this on in the background and just have some background noise while they do whatever. Um, seeing seeing how this plays out and how the direction of the piece changes and goes along the way is also going to be really fun, uh, just as either background noise or something to pay attention to for the whole two-hour segment. So the thought behind this piece is actually from a dream that I had maybe a month or so ago from when this, when I recorded this. Um, and that's, it was a dream about um, kind of a lair underground and the atmosphere was a lot of greens and browns and there were shelves that were wooden and stuff was decaying and it was, it was very ominous. And so I'm, I'm trying to capture that same feeling the same um, visuals as what was in my dream. Uh, I, in the end, I don't think it achieved it, but it is very pretty and I like it a lot. So this first more straight and kind of intersecting uh, brown, two shades of brown uh, that I'm putting down here is is kind of the representation of the um, the beams and the shelves and all the wooden structures that were in my dream. So this is going to be more or less in the foreground of everything and then uh, the other colors I'm going to put in the, the background. I'm going to erase the pencil lines that I put down um, with some kneaded eraser. Uh, I normally don't pencil out too much to begin with, but for this piece I wanted just that that basic L shape uh, easily for me to to see and, and, and go over with, with these two different shades of brown. I'm a big fan of kneaded eraser. Um, it, it really, it grabs pencil. You can sometimes lift some ink out of pieces if you scuff it up with, uh, if you scuff up paper with any sort of I don't know, like a, a wood or something like that, and it leaves a, a little little mark or anything. A lot of times, a kneaded eraser can get down into the fibers and and pull most of the uh, of the abrasion up, which is really nice. I, I I've worked with it a lot over the years. My cat Amaro uh, really likes to steal kneaded eraser, though. She has taken and hidden a few chunks of it, and it's somewhere in the house. I don't know where she keeps hiding it but it's, it's here, just in one of her secret spots. She has, she has a layer of her own hidden in the house with all sorts of stuff, hair ties and whatever else that she likes to steal. Oh, and, and she's taken a, a 32, was it 32 gigabyte? Or was it more? No, it was like a, it was a 256 gigabyte uh, thumb drive that I was using to transport um, images back and forth. And she has hidden that somewhere in my house as well. So at some point I'll find it or the next owners will. We'll see. So the colors of this space were purple, blue, and green. Um, so I've chosen to start with a dark color, purple, and this is going to be my base to, to draw off of for the rest of it. So the, the other colors are going to fill in the spaces around as I, I build off of this. I 
I always make rules for myself as well. So for this piece, I'm going to put uh, the blue that I've chosen, the darker blue, next to purple, and it pretty much can only touch purple and then the super dark green that I have. So this is the, the layer of blue that I'm going to add to the outside of purple. I build off of purple with blue, but that's the only color that can be built off besides green. Um, I'm trying to remember and keep my, my instructions straight from, from when I drew this. Um, so it will, it will contact purple, but in the way that I'm building off of purple right here. And it will make shapes and make it make it ready for the next layer of color, which is going to be a in-between blue-green, and then finishing off with a chartreuse, which is a light, limey green. I'm basically trying to make fun little pockets of color that kind of swirl and undulate like a, a swirling mist with a green-purplish backlight.
here's that first layer of green. So this, this to my eyes is a, is an in between like a, a grass green and a blue. So turquoisey, but not quite total turquoise.
I thought it might be kind of fun to keep some of these um, uh, transitions, how I'm moving the camera around in so that you can see how many times that I do it, um, all the different changes, the, the position of the paper. I, I tape it down and then untape it and reposition and all of that. At a little bit later, I find that it gets a little distracting, so I start editing out all of the little transitions, all of the different changes, or simply just uh, speeding it up through it. Uh, so if you don't like it, you only have to wait a little while, maybe, maybe another 10 or so minutes before I start uh, changing that. Here's the first layer of the light green, the chartreuse green, uh, that I add to the outside of the, uh, the in-between blue-green. Uh, this is to, to give more depth and to, to bring kind of a focal point to these different spots, these different um, fold spots, at least in my mind. It was right about here that I started to get to that point where everybody, every every artist gets to this point where you start hating the drawing or disliking it or or in some way, shape or form, it just doesn't, it doesn't do it for you anymore. So uh, right here is about where I started to, to get those feelings. It just wasn't turning out the way that I wanted it to and how, it, how I wanted it to feel. But I find that a lot of times if you just start if you just kind of keep going and, and with the idea that if you don't like it, you can always just start over or, or ditch the idea altogether, it kind of it lessens the blow and it makes it a little easier to keep, keep drawing. I'll try to let you guys know when, uh, when I actually start liking this again. Um, it doesn't take too long if I remember correctly, but uh, it's probably at about the three to five hour mark. Yeah. At least, at least in drawing, not in video. So the thought behind the green is that it can only touch, at least this light green, is that it can only touch the, the uh, in-between blue-green. Um, yeah, it can, be, it can be slightly touched by a dark green, but in the end, I didn't want it to be in contact with purple or with the, the light blue too much. 
there, there'll be spots in here that it does contact, like right there. Uh, these are touching. Uh, so is the blue. But yeah, it's just kind of a light rule to go by so that I can create depth and give a little more order to the, to the chaos. This is also when I start putting in the dark green. And this I made a rule that it, it can only touch purple, blue, and sometimes the light green. Uh, so I can build off of the, the purple with the dark green. And I can also add the blue to the outside of the dark green. Yeah, but I can't put the light, the in-between blue on it.
close the gap here. So I put the in-between green on the outside of the light green, and then I start filling it in with the blue as well on that side so that it can uh, close, close the green, encapsulate it. I felt it was important to keep spots where it was real-time drawing in there so that uh, so that the technique can be seen, um, just how, how slow and or fast it, it, it is in real time versus it sped up. Because when I speed up these clips, they're going at a thousand times speed, so it's a, a lot shorter. A 10-minute section turns into a minute, which is insane in my mind, but it's still great. It makes it a little more engaging for me as well. Um, I know my my brain how it works is I like to be engaged with something and just watch watch the different different tones and different things happen. And so this is very relaxing and not not as engaging. So having the different tempos and the different um, different angles and different uh, speeds can really help with that.
like I said earlier, my my rules are more or less just a guideline. Um, I don't always stick to them. Like at this this spot right here, I believe I, I switch one of my rules around so that uh, I can have a little bit more artistic freedom. It's not the easiest getting the right angle to, to draw all the time. Um, I like to I like to try to mix it up a little bit and and be able to have different positions so that my wrist doesn't cramp or my hand doesn't cramp. Uh, but I do like to have a certain certain angle so that I can draw uh, with more control. Because a lot of times, if I if I move my hand around or move the paper around um, to get a better angle, sometimes it's not always the best position to get the best control. Uh, so recording at the same time, it makes things a lot more difficult, a lot more challenging, uh, just to, just from a technical standpoint, just doing this technique and being able to make straight lines, uh, a bunch of times over and over and over again, and then having to switch the angle can make things difficult.
almost always have one of my cats either in my lap or in the room with me. This one, this is Bjorn, and he's my my silly orange boy. He he doesn't like to sit in my lap for too long. He uh, he's very particular about how he sits, and a lot of times he'll he'll get frustrated with me for not not uh, sitting the correct way for him. So he only sits in my lap for maybe 15 or so minutes before he gets fed up with me. It's right about here that I started liking this drawing more. Um, I got back into into the feel of it, and now that I have some of these spaces uh, closed off in the way that I I want them to be, it started to feel feel better. And and at this point, I wanted to challenge myself, so I started this this pattern um, right on the edge of the the, the brown uh, wood like structure in the middle. Uh, to, so that I had to work around it and make it look like this went underneath the, uh, the brown lines. So, um, yeah, sometimes I do this to myself where I decide that uh, I want to, want to challenge myself and make things a little bit more complicated and, and uh, get myself back into it. So this is, this is about the time that I started doing that. I wanted to keep this section in right here uh, to show sometimes when I change positions, uh, it doesn't feel right. And so I'll, I'll spin it around and see what feels right. And sometimes I do this three or four times before I actually end up with the, the position that feels good or is easiest to draw or um, easiest to record is the other one. <laughs> so there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of that that happens behind the scenes, so it's interesting to see it happen in real time here.
here it is again. I'm about to spin this drawing all over the place to find the best position possible. <laughs> It's hard for me to catch all of the, the times that my hand is out of frame for more than three or five seconds and cut that section out and splice it back together so that it, it looks concise. So I apologize for these dead moments in here and I wanted to keep this one in there uh, just, just to show that, but it's not the easiest to be able to pick out from seven hours of footage a 10 second spot and cut it out.
wanted to make it look like the 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 lines were coming through on the other side of this and continuing the pattern. So I always try to make things look a little bit more flowy and a little bit more over under in these types of moments. And it's it's hard to line up all of the lines, but I found if you if you just kind of get them close enough, it, it's good enough to to see that and understand and not really question where things went or um, have things just kind of disappear along the way. Switching to this angle, it made the pattern a lot more visible and a lot easier to see how, how things line up and where, where it goes and what it should do. I wanted to try to keep a healthy mix of different patterns that I do in these real time sections. So right here is one of the the more one of the longer patterns that I do. So these lines they are much longer than than normal. It's not a lot of hand motion. It's a lot of uh, dragging my arm from my shoulder across the paper. I find it interesting to watch and and see how the technique changes um, from from going concave to going convex. So right here, I'm starting to push the pattern outwards and create a fold at the at the very bottom of where this connects to the rest of the purple.
I thought hard about cutting this section out, but I decided to keep it in. Um, so I'm trying, in a second, I'm gonna try to get the best angle. And so I'm, I'm gonna take it up, tear it off the with the tape, and then I'm gonna try to, to position my hand the way I want it, get the camera where I want it. And sometimes it takes a little bit of effort. It takes a little bit of time to get the right angle and the right, um, the right spot just to, to do everything smoothly without cramping or, or making it look goofy. I felt like this elbow spot was, was kind of important to get just right so that it didn't, it didn't look like the purple connected to the brown um, pattern in the middle so that it, it didn't, yeah, it didn't fold together. It didn't grow together. I wanted it to be two separate entities. So uh, this this part was was a little bit of a, a challenge to get everything to go just right. It was right about here that I realized I had to actually make the, the rest of the pattern for um, the green and the blue and everything behind on the opposite side of the, of the brown section in the middle. Uh, so I had to kind of go back and, and think about it a little bit and how I was going to continue this pattern because I, I almost made an oopsie with, with how much purple I made, how much purple uh, ink I put down on the paper before actually thinking about it. So you have to, I, I find that it's, it's easy to get lost in, in the moment and just put ink on paper fast and um, not think about some of the other stuff in the background. And that's why I left this, this hole in the middle so that I could put uh, the two different shades of green on the inside and make it look a little more natural.
I like this portion where, where you can see the whole picture and, and kind of the overall vision of how things, how things I, how I want it to go. Seeing all the different shades of, of green kind of playing off of each other and, and just the folds and waves of the purple. It's, it's really fun to see at this distance. Here's another challenge spot that I wanted to do. I liked, I liked how the uh, the pattern went underneath uh, the the bookshelf. That's what I'm going to call it. Uh, the bookshelf in the middle, the brown portions in the middle. Uh, so I I wanted to have that happen again, where I had to continue the pattern underneath all of that again, just to just to challenge myself.
I want the majority of this portion of the drawing of this piece of paper uh, to be green. So I'm going to be doing a lot of green from here on out, this darker, more olivey green. Thank you. 
I honestly started to get a little tired of all the green, but it's what I wanted in the end. It's just, it's just so much. There's just, there's just so much green at the bottom. It's a good thing. It's what I want. It, it really was, but it got annoying.
I got tired of all the green. I, I decided that I had to go back to purple and do something else. It was just, it was just get, getting too much. Um, and I still wanted this portion of the drawing to be a little bit lighter and a little bit less, less uh, green. <laughs> I just wanted it to be a little bit different than, than the bottom portion.
felt really nice to get one more of these patterns in on the side so that it wasn't all all green. <laughs> uh, I didn't. Re I don't regret my decision. At the time, I didn't regret regret my decision, but it was definitely becoming too too much solid olivey green. I didn't want the the piece to to speak too much of just that one color. So um, I'm really glad that I put this one in on the side. And here we are, back to green. It fills in the rest. It makes this bottom corner. It's a uh, it's a good filler in this situation, and it's nice to see all of these these nice folds and undulations of a single single uniform color happen. That's why I like black and white so much, because it's it's all just uniform. It's one one color that I have to put down on paper, so it keeps it very very concise, very stark.
By this point in the drawing, I was ready to move on to the next one. It's not that I didn't enjoy the ending or anything like that. It's just, um, I, uh, it took about three weeks for me to do this piece from start to finish. And I really wanted to move on to the next piece because I had something in mind that I'd been dreaming and thinking about for the, the last few days. So having this done was, was uh, a big relief. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Find me on my other social media uh, platforms. Here's the, the finished piece. I think it turned out really fun. Um, kind of different than, than a lot of the other stuff that I've done. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments below and if you like this longer format. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>